Welcome back guys to Fly Tying with me, Telis Katsugianos, and we're now into episode 9, which for me is a very, well all of these episodes are fun to make, but the Green Highlander is today's fly, and uh, I've always thought that that's one of the most beautiful salmon flies, the, the, or patterns, if you look at the color combination and everything, but it's also a, a fly that is very misunderstood. It's often referred to a fly that's perfect for Norway or Clearwater rivers, a typical Norway fly, whatever that is. Uh, it is a fly that's supposed to be used when it's very sunny and bright conditions outside. And if you look at, regardless the color of the water, if you look at the surroundings uh, along a river valley, it's often a lot of trees, it's green, different colors coming out. The Green Highlander with its bright colors, it's perfect for those conditions. And I have a friend, uh, he, Bjorn, he more or less just fished the Green Highlander, regardless of what river, and he catches a lot of fish. And in Murrum, for example, if you would say that you're fishing with a green, yellow kind of fly, people will shake their heads saying, nah, nah, that's from Norway. Bjorn didn't care about that, and he's caught fish both in uh, spring or in June, for example, a super fresh, June salmon around 11 kilos on a Green Highlander and that water is very peaty murky you have if the Sun is out the water is literally shining in a brown tone but the way I tie the Green Highlander and the original Green Highlander which is, this one is pretty close to you will see that if you throw that out in any river during sunlight you will see ah I get the point with this fly and it's supposed to hide the fly in its surrounding. Uh, and when it's sunny, this uh, fly will do that. And uh, in my opinion, it is very, very fun to tie due to the, all these beautiful colors. And uh, of course, it is also a very good fly. So let's get started. There are several different ways to make a Green Highlander or variations of it. And I hope you will enjoy this one. This is how I've made it for last 10 years or so. First take your 1.8 millimeter tube burning in the back there. You can blow on it a little bit so it uh, goes a little bit faster than waiting for it to uh, get hard again. So then I'm pulling it all the way to that edge and I'm gonna use clear tube as you can see and I'm also using a drop tube gold or also known as bullet weight and and stuff like that different names but uh, I'm using uh, white thread for starters we're actually gonna change halfway in or in the end you will see the reason why soon but it's also due to the fact that the Green Highlander we have using a lot of light bright colors and uh, a black thread will just be very visible. Adding a little bit of dubbing, as usual I'm not doing a lot of body work and I'm adding this Salma Signature Sparkle Green and I'm just spinning this around a little bit in my fingers I'm pinching it here and I'm doing those laps and now you can see when that stops moving that means it's stuck and that's the time we fold it back like so and, and lock it in front. This is a very efficient way of dubbing and you can do this of course uh, when you're doing woolly buggers or whatever. It's not just for small points like there. You can make a whole body with it. Uh, that's that. Now we're going to do the wings and uh, as usual I'm going to uh, tie it reversed which means uh, I'm tying it in backwards or in uh, and I'm gonna tie it like so and we're gonna fold it uh, the original Green Highlander pattern has uh, a lot of uh, different colors or if you look at the details the orange is not in the bottom but I prefer it to have the first wing to be orange and then yellow green and so on and then you might wonder why is Telis then adding the yellow one first? It's because the fact that it is reversed fly tying or wing tying that means that this one, the yellow needs to be first because when we fold it, it's going to be on top of the orange one. So like so, 
you can tie it in like that and then just afterwards or you can cut and adjust before you tie it in it's up to you to decide what you prefer and here is the orange fox bright yellow first and then we're taking the orange this is going to be like a small little striking point in the in the lower part me personally i really enjoy tying the green highlander i think it's a beautiful fly and it's very very good in right conditions sunny bright days it has proven itself to be very very good what i'm doing now as and i'm adjusting uh, and i'm tapering the wing a little bit this is the way i normally do this i cut off first and then tie it in but you can do like i just did there as well remember what's up and down short and long when you're doing the reverse it's very easy to uh, put it on the wrong side or it's not the end of the world though it's, it still will work but if we have put a little bit of uh, time into making a good taper tying it in wrongly then that all of that is for nothing depending on how much you uh, leave here that works a little bit as support as well to have a wing if you want it to stand but it's of course uh, you will notice that is uh, there is a limit to how much you should have behind there okay that's the first two wings you can see it has that little hot uh, orange thing there in the in the lower part even though this is not hot orange i meant it like a hot spot on the fly there you can adjust the dubbing's length uh, now we're going to add one strand of tinsel flash it's very similar to flashaboo it's a little bit wider uh, flash so we're just taking one strand and like so and fold it over and attach it all these synthetic materials should be a little bit uneven in length otherwise they might stick together uh, in the water so it's good if they have a little bit different length like so okay time for the first hackle and we're going to use uh, rooster saddle bright yellow as the first color and when you're choosing a hackle you should try to have the picture in mind that the the feather when uh, wrapped should be about a third of the total wing length and you can do like so that you're measuring but after a while your, your eye measurement will, will be pretty good i'm gonna start here now by removing the crap <laughs> that i don't want which is this fluffy part there you go this the, the good thing about rooster saddle in my opinion is that you get both the a little bit more uh, softer more uh, thicker f more filling of fibers and you also have those thin classic rooster cape uh, kind of structure so you in my opinion rooster saddle is a very very good choice uh, for salmon fly for these front tackles okay i'm cutting here then you get that little triangle that's our attachment point i'm attaching it on that hump there and locking it just beneath onto the tube gets that to stick a little bit better open your scissor do not use the sharp cutting edge you use the other edge the inside here it's like 90 degree angle on that one it's a hard angle which is perfect for uh, doing this with the hackle cracking uh, or uh, duplicating it slightly uh, just slowly let it slide like so and then you get that effect okay start wrapping take your finger pull it back pinch and release the feather and reverse your grip because if you just take it like so first of all it's difficult and second of all it will twin the fibers uh, or the whole stem which makes it way more difficult to create this nice front tackle just pinch it pull it back pinch release as you can see i did two or three uh wraps of the hackle on that ugly hump and the rest just beneath to cover it uh, and you see the benefit of having a very light thread well in this case even the thread is white uh, it doesn't show anywhere and now it's time for 
the green part. Uh, you can use the classic green Highlander, which is a little bit more in this color. I prefer bright green. Uh, I think it looks better, but it's uh, up to everyone to decide, of course, what you prefer. Uh, there we go. And now I'm looking for that natural taper. Where is it in the wing? And I'm taking out a little bit of that excess here. This fly will have four wings in total. And when you're tying... Uh, if you, for example, make a fly with just one wing, and now we're up to four, that means that you need to uh, have that in mind of the how much you should use. It's very easy to overdress it when you're tying a lot of colors. So, rather have it a little bit too thin. And in the end that fly will still fish very good. Have a rather a underdressed fly than an overdressed fly. So, and I'm folding that one back. You can see this is just a little bit longer than the yellow. Slowly, gradually tapering that wing. Making it longer and thinner in the tip there. Now it's gonna add uh, a little bit more flash. I'm not, as you know, very keen on a lot of flash in a fly, but a little bit. And in this scenario, I really like to use blue. A blue angel hair, salt water, the one with a little bit wider uh, strands. This green and blue together, in my opinion, looks really, really good. And of course, sunny day. The, the sky is blue, so if you're gonna do that classic thing with the salmon fly and hide it in its surroundings, this will help doing that. Help do that. Okay, now it comes to the uh, second hackle, and uh, as usual, I use most of the times rooster cape, rooster saddle, or soft hackle patches. It depends on how f much filling I want in this. Uh, soft hackle patch, for example, has more volume. Uh, a rooster hackle from a cape just has these thin fibers, so everything depends on what you want and how the, you want the fly to look in the end. But I'm going to use a, a soft tackle patch uh, feather here in this one. And I'm adjusting, removing what I don't want. The green hackle should of course be a little bit longer than the first one, the yellow one. And this, as you can see, has uh, more f uh, fuller fibers, so I will not use as much or uh, many as many wraps. If it gets, if you get the same amount of wraps here with a material that is has more volume, of course that will create a fly that it might be a little bit overdressed, like so. Still using the white. Uh, thread as you can see but we'll soon shift and there covering that nice uh, there then coming down just beneath it and attaching it with a reversed left grip and then the rest I'm wrapping like normally so now you can cut it off or just in for safety reasons you can wait because i'm going to change the thread now and then a little bit of glue on that one two three and cut both of these off there you go i mean as the fly looks right now it, it, it will work beautifully but we're gonna add that final little touch and in my opinion that will be the fiery brown wing and we're gonna use dark fire brown but first I'm gonna change the thread to a black one because I want that head to be black so I'm attaching that with a few laps like so and cutting this one off there you go now we're taking this dark fiery brown. It almost has a claret reddish tone in it. In my opinion, this is 
a really beautiful color and this will fit very nicely in this one uh, this makes the fly of course a little bit darker it's not as uh, bright anymore this would be a real crystal clear water green tone uh, with uh, this kind of green but adding this in my opinion will make the fly a little bit more universal uh, but of course this would still work in a, in a crystal clear water but this fiery brown here will add in my opinion uh, a little bit more universal coloring to it and I'm folding this one as usual the benefits of reversed is that now you can see how nice and clean it is in the front there there's nothing you need to clean and cut away everything is ready I'm pulling the brush through it there you go I'm gonna add the cheeks to it you can of course depending on which color you want to be dominant you can use more yellow hackle if you want that dominant or in this case I have more of the green due to the fact that there's a green highlander variation I want the green to be dominant in the in the colors okay let's add those cheeks and you can use uh, well you can use all kinds of material or feathers for this but uh, I'm using uh, jungle cock feathers measuring these in in my opinion this should also be about a third of the total wing length uh, about proportions Th these eyes are maybe a little bit too big but it, I'm starting to run a little bit low on what I have now you can see that I'm, I'm uh, unwrapping a little bit and then reattaching the reason for that that will give me a smaller little head there if I just keep adding to it it's easy to make that head a little bit too bulky that's a little trick that will uh, help you uh, make those heads smaller and also the last wing or the last steps of your fly should always be the one uh, with the thinnest wing and everything like that if you want to create a very s small head the last wing should not be the thickest one that one will be very thick then. just folding these back this will of course also give a stronger fly or they, they will not get, get loose that easy otherwise it is very easy to lose them if we are not attaching them properly uh, if you use cone heads or stuff like that of course that will uh, protect that a little bit more but now we're just using a nice head here that's why it's m even more important to make sure that we have attached it properly okay final step adding glue to the thread like so I'm doing my turns here a few laps and cut off while this is still wet I'm doing so that I'm pushing it around so it makes sure that that little thing doesn't poke out and there we have it a green Highlander uh, or a variation of course of it uh, in my opinion this variation is uh, the one that I have mess most success with you can of course uh, have less of the fire brown and more dominant with the green it, everything depends on uh, your personal preference uh, but this fly is in my opinion like this it is the best uh, I have used at least in the in the sunray or in the green highlander category what you do now is of course cut that off either with a razor blade or you do that with uh, your scissor I'm gonna cut with the razor blade and then carefully just burn a small little edge and then you can choose to add more glue to it or not